we are now told by our leader to look toward the leader within, which is another way of saying look toward the God within yourself. For there is a messenger, there is a God in all of us who speaks to us all the time, speaks to us and gives us words of wisdom and light and truth and guidance. Right. But we don't always listen to the voice of God, to the godly and divine leader within right. that would direct us on the straight path, right. the path that would lead to health, happiness, success, love, prosperity, money, good homes, and friendship in all walks of life. We many times fight to silence the voice of the God within and to put down the God within. One of the greatest exercises of communicating with the God within, our ancestors knew about this a long time ago. Our ancestors in ancient Africa, our ancestors who called on the God of Kumkulu, the one God, was just another name for saying God Almighty. Yes, Our ancestors who called on Nakum Pong, who called on Unveling Kong. Our ancestors who called on Oshun, Ogun, Yemanja, Obatula, who called on Oludumare, who called on Olufun and Ileda, who called on Osa and Oset. Our ancestors who spoke different dialects of the African tongue of the original language called on one God, but they called him by many names. But no matter what name you call him by, no matter what name you call her by, because the Quran teaches us that man and woman are twin halves of the same essence. Twin halves of the same divine essence. So you don't have the God unless you got the goddess. And you don't have the goddess unless you got the God. It's the twin halves of the same essence. They understood the importance of prayer. Now there was a time when we didn't go into buildings to pray. We didn't go into buildings to pray. We didn't have to deal with the ritual of prayer. We didn't deal with the ritual of prayer because our every pulse beat, for the most part, our heart beat, our deeds and actions were in harmony for the most part and in tune to a great degree with the divine, universal, natural, and cosmological order of things and in harmony with the divine law and will of Almighty God. So our deeds were a prayer. Our actions were a prayer. Our words were a prayer. And so we didn't need a building with a roof on it. We prayed under that the roof of that great church, that great cathedral, that great synagogue, that great masjid, that great mosque, that great temple of the Holy of Holies, which had as its canopy the heavens or the stars of the divine supreme being that he had stretched out over this vast expanse called 196,940,000 square miles called planet Earth today. We understood prayer. If we're going to contact the God within and look toward the leader within and look toward the Allah or the God in the person of the black man and woman or the black umar or community or the black nation, we must understand what prayer is all about. Prayer is actually focus. What is it? Prayer is focus. Prayer is meditation. Prayer is not only focus and meditation, but prayer is spiritual and divine concentration. It's focus. It's meditation. It's concentration. It's communion and communication with the divine supreme being. It puts us in tune and in harmony with the spiritual and mathematical laws of the cosmos and with the proper words spoken at the right time, with the proper thoughts thought at the right time.
the atmosphere. Come on. We can rearrange the molecules in the atmosphere. We can reach out through the darkness of our circumstance Come on. and touch somebody somewhere and move them in the direction that we want to move them in. That we might gain ease and joy. That we might gain peace of mind. And that we might gain what is called that state where we enter into peace. Yes, sir. Prayer, focus, meditation, concentration, communion, and communication. Some of the Islamic scholars say that when we pray, we should pray in an audible tone. We should pray in a tone where we can hear ourselves. Well, why do you have to hear yourself? You must pray in an audible tone sometime so that you can contact the God within yourself. There is no spook God in the sky. There is no devil under the ground. God is in the person of man and woman. The devil came in the person of the white man and woman. And some of us try to out devil the devil today. So we have to understand, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to be long today, but I'm sure going to be strong. We're dealing with Allah in the person, God in the person, and as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's apostle, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan is directing us in the current issue of the final call. I just saw it when I got here. I've been working on this subject as I was shaving it, but he said, look toward the leader within. I said, hey, this is where I was going. And so I sat and read while these fiery ministers, these lightning bolts, these claps of thunder were up here raining down truth upside of our heads and into our minds and hearts. I was reading from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's book. They say that whatever the mind of woman and man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. They say as a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh, so is she, so is he. That means that the mind is powerful. Not only is the mind powerful, the mind is divine. And when you are in communication beyond a certain realm and go down deep in the inner sanctum of the sanctum sanctorium, down deep into the holy of holies of yourself, where the God dwells, then you come into communion and communication with him or with the her essence of the God within yourself. And then you are able, like the rays of the sun, to reach out through the darkness of space. It makes no difference that the planet Pluto is four billion six hundred million miles from the sun. The sun's rays reach out, reach out through the darkness of space and touch the far planet Pluto and sets it in motion and causes it to spin at 1,037 and a third miles per hour. So it is with the directed thought. 